afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you so much for coming uh, today um, on this beautiful, beautiful Saturday um, to our very, very special exhibition, Clever Men. Um, I do really want to thank you so much, all of our, you know, for supporting us um, this year. Uh, Clever Men in Melbourne, our Melbourne Gallery, it's our last exhibition of the year in an incredibly full program we've had um, within Australia and outside of Australia as well, but um, we're so thrilled to finish on um, a really wonderful exhibition like this. And we really do want to um, just take a moment to thank you all so much for your interest and your support in the artists that we represent and for us. And you being here in, um, today is, is really um, important. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, the land that we are on today, and we pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, I would like to um, a very warm welcome to Dr. Diana James, who is um, joining us today. Diana is a senior research, uh, the senior research fellow from ANU, um, and has worked for many, many years in the Anangu, Pitjantjara, Yankunajara lands, uh, APY lands in South Australia, um, and has worked very, very closely um, with these three incredible artists here: um, Harry Jajuna, Dikki Minyantiri, and Tiger Palpaja. Um, and um, we invited Diana here today. We've got a, oh, just a bit of a background on this exhibition. Um, this exhibition, especially the Dickie Minion Terry paintings, um, really back in 2021, um, uh, our, oh, Delan uh, was based, uh, Delan Contemporary was based in Armadale. Um, there was no gallery, it was just um, office spaces in Armadale. Um, and we moved here in the middle of COVID, so Melbourne was extremely sad and very, very dead and very, very quiet. Um, but we were kind of opportunistic to find this space, which was empty like most things here. Um, but the very first paintings that graced the walls of this gallery were the works of Dickie Minion Thierry. Um, we had a solo show um, and much to the dismay of our collectors and clients, they were not for sale. So we had a non-selling exhibition, but we felt it was incredibly important to have a solo exhibition of his work. He's an incredible, important artist, which we'll um, talk about today, as well as um, uh, Tiger and Harry. Um, but uh, it was, he was, uh, Mr. Minion Thierry was, you know, so, um, you know, ferociously collected in life in his very, very short period of time when he was painting, that he never had a solo exhibition when he was alive. Um, and we did have these beautiful works all from the same collection. Um, which is what you see here today. And so I do want to also acknowledge the passion of the collectors who owned these paintings. Back then they weren't quite ready to sell the work, but you know, now it is time, which is you know, a wonderful thing for us. Um, but uh, it was important to really put that work forward. And uh, Diana James um, was very, very generous in uh, contributing to that catalogue that we put forward. Um, that we had in, in 21 and wrote a beautiful portrait of Mr. Minion Thierry, which is in our current catalogue as well. Um, but it was, um, I think it really imbued our space in kind of the good kind of Nate, like the good vibes, I guess, uh, what we really wanted to do and how we wanted to represent our artists and really put them first. So I feel like for the last exhibition of 2024, this is a really special exhibition for that as well. So yeah, thank you so much for coming. And Diana, uh, thank you so much for joining us. I first met Diana on the um, Anangor Pitjantjara lands, actually in Pibilajara, which is far, far west. Um, when I was working at Ninukup, it was like 2011 or something. Um, but um, I'll hand you over to Diana because um, you were so excited to have this, to, when I told you about this exhibition um, and that uh, you were very happy to come down for the show. Um, would you just like to um, just give everybody a bit of an overview of your kind of work that you did in the Pitjantjara lands and how you came to know um, these three men? Sure. Yes. Thank you. Um, thank you. Okay. It's a, a great privilege to be here and particularly to be able to talk about the work of these three clever men who I, um, I knew and worked with over many years. I, um, I went to the APY lands as a, an art advisor to Kavadi in 1975. These particular artists were not painting then. <laughs> Senior men in the community uh, evolved in law and culture and very much um, respected. But I actually didn't, didn't meet and live with them closely until I moved to Pibla in uh, 1980. And Harry Tijuna was a senior man in that community. He again was not an artist. He was a senior lawman. 
Um, and as you would have read if you've read um, Vanessa's essay, <laughs> a man of many wives and a <laughs> very powerful monkery, a traditional healer uh, with great authority uh, over that entire region. He was, he was one of those very respected men in the community. And at that time, uh, many of the senior men on the APY lands were not painting and that was because there had been controversy with the early work that came out of Papunya. Uh, and, and only all from the uh, Harichatuna and the others, the men of, of that um, age, who had all grown up in the desert, been born in the desert, before there was any missionary or white fella settlement out there. They had, uh, they were called Anangul Pudida, born on the ground, which is of great significance because you were born in the country of the Jukurba of your ancestor and you embody that, as we'll get no later to talk, to talk about, about the signature in these paintings, which is so strong. Anyway, that's my background is that I was working there and I, because I was working in the arts, I was keenly aware of the controversy that was happening and we were very much um, instructed to concentrate on carving and traditional bono and traditional works rather than moving into the acrylic art world and the artists themselves were not interested at that stage. The, there were reparations being made and negotiation ceremonial up the line um, with the with Uta Uta Jungla and others that, uh, that people would know of from the Papanya movement. Uh, but, but on the APY lands there was no movement towards the acrylic arts. So these these three senior men did not decide to paint until quite a lot later in their lives, you know, 2004, 2005. And by that time, they were very clear about asserting who they were and what of their law they could share or not share on paintings. And so I find it really extraordinary to be here amongst these works where they, ha they are imbued with such power and knowledge and I have enormous respect for all three of them as men of power and knowledge and as healers. And yet, they are they're perfectly safe. They have been rendered um, uh, safe for anybody to, to experience and learn about the power of the land without being exposed to symbols or uh, information that uninitiated people should not have access to. So I think, I think it's... Um, it's, it's something to, to be aware of when you're in the presence of these paintings that they are imbued with deep power and knowledge. So I've gone on a bit long, haven't no, I? No, no, not oh. at all. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, so that's, yeah, so I have worked with them for a long time, but, but, but the painting, their paintings came later in their life and I've been surprised and amazed and um, very thrilled to, to see their paintings develop and to see them now in this exhibition is very exciting. Thank you. Um, uh, well, I just um, we were talking before, so Diana arrived a bit earlier, and we were sort of you know going over and, and talking about you know this exhibition and how um, special it really is. Um, these three men haven't had an exhibition together before, um, and their authority really like it wasn't matched by anyone else at the time, but except by each other. Um, and the title, Clever Men, I might just um, ask Joanna if you'd like to kind of, you know, um, talk a little bit more about what that means and really like what, what is an anunkri, like what is a traditional healer and, and who are they to the community and, and, and yeah, what, what do they mean as far as, yeah, like in the, in the community? Well, anunkri is um, a traditional healer, medicine man or medicine woman, so it's it can be of either, people can be man or woman and they are, they are recognised as healers quite early in life, often around about the age of seven. People will see that the spirit of the power of the jokurpa, the particular healing um, medicinal law that's come through, is, is alive in that person. And then they are encouraged and taught by, by elder nunkaris and gradually um, you, you'll find that people develop specialties so, so some people are particularly good at healing illness in young children or uh, attending for um, childbirth or healing for major burns. Um, uh, and in that um, context, one of the interesting things about um, Harry Tatuna's um, 
statements in his paintings. He, he calls himself, I am Spider-Man, Wadi Wanka. Now, Wanka is, um, can refer to the spider, but it also refers to the itch, itchity grubs and the kind of web that they make in the trees and that is in traditional medicine is knocked down from the tree you've got to be very careful because if you um, if you don't treat it properly it gives you an incredible rash on the skin but you clean it out properly and you heat it and then it is wrapped over a burn and it becomes like a bandage so it's it's a direct um, connection with with what he won't with the spider-man <laughs> um, so the yeah the importance of nunkery is can't be overstated really. They are usually men and women also of high degree in law. So they are very often are holders and custodians of long song cycles. Um, they, uh, they've been through a lot of ceremony and dance and they are very skilled at, I would, at, at managing uh, power because a lot of power comes with being a doctor, a, a medicine person. And as Dickie Minyantry would say, um, he, he can perceive a mum or like a bad spirit inside somebody or even in the community hovering around ready to cause harm. And he will attack it. I mean, <laughs> Minyantry is quite a wonderful storyteller, very colourful. And he talked about getting his spears and his spear throw to go after this mum or. Now that is not just uh, in reality, but that is his, his mapan, his spirit body that can go out and go into the body of the ill person and find the bad or the, the, in, uh, the infection and chase it around, <laughs> get rid of it and scare it out of the, the body or catch it in his spear throw and take it with him and dispose of it. So it's, um, it's, if you're interested in this, there's, some, there's, a couple, there's a wonderful book about Nunkery that's been published by the MPY Women's Council, which I think I'd highly recommend to anybody who's got an interest in this area. So the fact that all three of these men were, um, were Nunkery is very special too. I haven't talked about Tiger Palpita, but his Nunkery spirit came from the Wanambi, the, the mythic rainbow serpent that, uh, that protects a lot of water holes out in the desert, because water is so important and so important for life. But in his particular place relates to a very specific spot in the Man Range. It's called Piltadi, which was the home of these two um, Wanambi men who were dancing and dancing and performing ceremony. And the story is, is, is in the book as well. But they had that power to transform. So one of the um, aspects of being a Nunkari is the ability to transform into, um, in, in their case, the, the rainbow serpent can manifest as a rainbow, as an energy that transforms into other animals um, and, and that healing energy. So some of the Nunkari that I've known out there over the years have had ability to, uh, not only their spirit is freed in the night and can go out and, and, and heal into other people's bodies, but also they've had the ability to shape shift and appear differently to different people and to move to physically um, relocate themselves. So it's, um, it's, it's a huge tradition of great importance and still is today. A lot of the Nunkari now are working with the, the health service out on the lands and, and performing healing. Mm. And it's, um, you say, talking about the spirit body, spirit being, I mean, all three men um, really do put themselves physically into, like, into the canvases as well. So with um, Tiger Publisher's work, the cross that you see is actually like his, a monica, it's, it's his T for tiger. So um, in um, many of the paintings here, you can see that T and, uh, and that is tiger. It's not a, a, a Christian cross, it's his name and you know that's mine um and harry as well we were just talking earlier about how you know he's um you know he, he he's kind of later on he would bring together the um the like the principal uh chukurpa in the one canvas and so there's i mean this painting here we've got wadi miru which um uh wadi from the kungaralpa kapa seven sisters um, Wadi Wanka, and there's a, the black and white painting in the other room. There's it's got um, uh, Nintaka as well. Um, so, uh, do, do you want to talk? We were talking before it was about how um, you know Harry. I, I, the question was like, I mean, did these 
spirit beings in creation time? Like, did they come across each other? Did they actually interact, um, you know, in the Jukurpa? Or was it something that Harry was just, you know, I'm, I'm, I can do this, so I'm going to, you know, assert it in my canvases? Hmm. The, there's, um, the, the song lines of these creation beings are actually in the country. So they created rocks and water holes and places and it's narrated in the story and that's sung in the storyline. And there is no doubt that in the country that um, Harry Tatuna and this applies to the others as well, that they would call their, their Ngora Walcha, that country that they're very strongly related to, all three of these creation beings traverse that country. Their tracks are known to these men who are senior holders of that law and whether they actually crossed or interaction, people will say they were aware of them. So sitting in the, in the rock shelter with this 7,000 year old rock art, you will see images of um, Wadi Niru and the Kunga Rankalpa, and then you'll see over there an image of Wadi Nintaka, which is fairly similar to the, even the, the realistic way that he's depicted in Harry Tatuna's painting. And if, if I ask people, um, the senior men there, what that meant, they would say, oh yeah, well, that's because Wadi Niru was sitting here and he could see him over there, you know, he could see him, that's his hill over there. And, so he saw him going past and he's aware of him. It's like they're aware of each other traveling through the country. And the reason why, for me, these are, these are highly, um, they're like signatures. They're statements of I am by all these three men is because he had the authority and the right to tell those stories, to hold that law and to say, I am of that Tukurpa. So I am Wadiwanka obviously the, his primary, I am Spider-Man, but I am also fully, I have the authority to tell the Wadi Nintaka story, which he did as part of the song lines research. He had it filmed and recorded. And he has, um, he has the right to tell the Wadi Niru story, as he did when I was camping out with his family, me and my young family out at Wajadada, and we're lying in our swags at night and he's telling the Kunga Uncle for stories that goes over and showing me how to tell the time of night by the transit of the Pleiades as it, as it moves over the sky. So, and, and that is the same then for Tiger Papata and it's a signature for him. It, the T is, 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 he's almost showing you the equivalence here of how important in our culture the signature is. You, you know, it has been for a long time to put your mark on something indicates you are owner of land or you're, you have agreed to a legal um, agreement. It's, it's hugely, hugely important in our culture. I think we're totally aware of that. So he's put the two signatures there. His signature is the cross and his signature is the Wanambi. And he is that, you know, this is him. This is who he is. That's his authority. And the same with, um, with uh, Dickie Minutari mm. and Wadi Willu, yeah. you know, the Kurlu, the stone Kurlu and the dance there. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, would, would you just like to talk a bit about that too, how, um, I mean, one thing we did when we had these beautiful um, uh, miniature paintings on the walls in 21, we also had them, we, we actually put a, a, a work by Emily Kamenware next to it and it was just extraordinary how, like, it was just like, okay, these two people were so incredibly important for, you know, equally as important, you know, culturally, their, you know, authority, but this veil, like, you know, the, you know, talk about Emily, you know, she veils her paintings with the dots, you know, you've got the, the um, yam underneath, yam tracking underneath. But um, Minion Thierry also does this in a different way. Did you want to talk a bit about that? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I um, had the privilege of sitting and, and watching him paint some of these at Urnabella as, he, as an older artist. He was painting and he was singing at the same time and singing the Wadi Willu, which is the Curlew, Stone Curlew from out in that tri-state area border, very important um, Jukurpa. And he started off, uh, the first layer from the, from the blank layer on, you know, would be full of a lot of symbols and very strong um, song that he was singing. And I was standing there, there's other senior men around there watching because everybody's a bit concerned about how much he bit might be prepared to share. But he's, he, he kept on working and working. So he sung it into the canvas, remembering and telling the story about even 
when they first came in from the bush and were living in the surrounding area around the Urnabella Mission, which was quite small at that time, they still maintained ceremony. And the women and the children would be away. It was just the men. This is why a lot of his, um, a lot of his paintings are called what he called Jokorpa, just for men. But the women could hear the singing, and you could probably hear it from the, uh, where the missionaries were sitting as well. So it's, it's very powerful, the song, him singing it and painting layer on layer on layer. He's actually um, showing the power, disclosing the power and the continuance and the importance of this ceremony at the same time as, as I said before, making it safe by painting over the top with the, with the white layers that he has there. So that nothing, a lot is there, but very little is re revealed that would be of danger, but the power is still there. So it's imbued with the song and, and the dreaming and the dukurpa. And, uh, and absolutely having talked to some of the early missionaries, they knew how powerful these ceremonies were. And luckily, in, a, in, in the historical sense, the Urnabella um, mission was not one that uh, was anti-culture dance performance or language and so this was absolutely maintained during the whole time. So, yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. It's, um, I, uh, it's a great opportunity to have Diana here and so I also I don't want to like you know suck up all the questions and, and so I think it's a really good opportunity if anyone wanted to ask um, any questions about this show it really is um, I mean I keep saying it's really special but I mean it, it really is special you know <laughs> like these these um, these men are of a generation and of that are, that really is never to be repeated. Like who they were, what they knew, how, like their life story. They had a whole like multiple lives before they actually started painting. Um, and so uh, look, you know to be able to present works like this, such a high caliber of of, of such important people, um, you know um, from you know the Anangul Pitanjara Yangkunajara lands. Is a, is, um, is a wonderful way to kind of, you know, finish up program of the year, but to, um, yeah, anyway, to give um, uh, these artists really um, the, uh, like the attention they deserve, like they really are important artists as far as, uh, you know, in Indigenous Australian art history, like they really are in, incredibly important. So we, we hope that, oh, that, um, yes, that that is communicated in this exhibition. But if anyone does have a question for um, Dr. Diana James while we're here, please ask now. It's a real privilege to get your background on these paintings. I just wondered if you could go, is that part of the discussion you're entering in on and without revealing the, the particular nature of the, of, of the images that are secret, um, in my imagination, maybe thinking about behind mature paintings by comparable artists, mm. uh, the, uh, are the images more uh, sp specifically iconic behind, without detailing what they might be, but are they more um, uh, you know, semantically specific uh, behind, coming up to more abstract elements? Do you want me to add to that? But that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you could add to it, it'd be great. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Not take as much as John can. Yes. No, no, that, absolutely. Uh, um, one of the advantages about being a female anthropologist, I don't ask questions of, uh, and I don't talk about stuff I shouldn't talk about. <laughs> so it's kind of a bit safe, really. Yeah. Uh, but I do, I do know what you're, you're referring to, and, and that was at the core of the original objection by some of the Pit and Darrow men, that there were some um, readable semantic... Um, iconic images that had been revealed that shouldn't have been. So yeah, that's exactly what um, often he would start, he would start to paint or, you know, they would be coming out in his first layer and then he would paint over. But it was what was wonderful in watching it is that it was, because he was a very, quite a fast painter. So as he's singing the song and talking about the fact that the women are away, but they're hearing, so they're hearing the men's power. He's painted those symbols of power, and then he's, it's almost like you're, you might be watching at a distance and the, the men are, are kicking up the dust, oh, yeah. you know. So, so the kurikuri, they're going around and around, and, the, and it's kicking up the dust, and it's, it's, it's protecting the, the watchers. Yeah. So you're there, you're right, you're close enough to hear it and feel the power of it and know about it, know that it's happening, in other words, not the detail of, 
but the dust is absolutely used, and I know this from being taught by other men about this and women about this with INMA, kicking up the dust is a way of protecting people from being, um, being adversely affected by powers that are not for their, or they haven't the training to deal with, basically. Yeah, so it's, um, yeah, that's, that's how we paint it. I wonder, in con continuing that, you talk about the other two artists, are they doing similar things? Because they, um, you know, the one is a very specific, that's all I No, 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 I was going to get the microphone. Question. Yes, no, um, um, I didn't, I wasn't present when uh, Tiger was painting, but I would say, looking at his work, he, he, has, uh, he has chosen very much to, to only use public imagery. That's, that's what I would say. And, and, and the way he told the story and the way he painted and the way he referred to, because he had this particular growth, like we would call it a mole, I suppose, but it's even longer. It was, looked a little bit like a little snake <laughs> growing out of his chest. And he would talk very openly about how that was the one of his spirit right inside him and rising up and giving him healing power in his hands. So when he painted, he painted much more uh, immediately the, the, the expression of that healing power and that outward journey. Yeah. So it's a slightly different process, yeah. Um, with Harry Tatuna, um, yeah, it's very, his, his work is, um, and to watch him paint is extraordinary, yeah. It's, it's like he's, um, he's, he's, he's conscious of all the symbol, now these, just, just as an aside, but those symbols for, that symbolic way of doing the Wadi Wonka, the Spider-Man, you might think it's the multiple legs but I've, I've since, in my research of early Mountford drawings, you know, Mountford was in the 1940s, was sitting down with Anangal at Unabella and just asking them to do drawings on pieces of paper. And there's one that is absolutely, fr uh, refers to the Kikingura area, which is in the Peterman Range, just north of where Harry was born. And it is the, the Wonka, um, the Jukurpa of the spider, and that, is referred to in, in this description of, the, of that symbol, it looks exactly the same, is of the young men who, who during initiation and when they're travelling through country on these long journeys, they have their hair bound up with hair string and that's at night when they're letting it down. Oh. So isn't that, isn't wow. that intriguing? Just, <laughs> that's their dreads. Yeah, that's their dreads. So he's referring to really men travelling on um, secret men business. Absolutely. Yeah. This yeah. is absolutely there. Yeah. But at the same time, it's a, it's a symbolic and an iconic that you can read that way, but it's not, not a secret, sacred one. It's a way of just showing it, and it kind of is a warning not to go any deeper, really. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the amusing way, sorry, it's kind of amusing the way he puts <laughs> What he, Nehru, the man who, can you one. can yeah. read that one? Okay, well that's all right then. <laughs> yeah. All right, next question. <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to explain yes. it? Oh, yeah. goodness, okay. <laughs> no, it's very funny and it's, re it's, the way it's told and women and men, senior women have rolled around in the dirt, it's, it's basically when, sometimes when this performed, it's very serious but it's also a very funny side of this and that is that he has this uncontrollable desire which is like a third leg. And it's so long, it's, ra it's wrapped around his waist. <laughs> but here it's his third leg. <laughs> yeah. yes. And part of the journey, it's a big complicated joke about that and the Seven Sisters, but it's about teaching young men to, to control their desire and some of the bad things that can happen when you don't. <laughs> so that all, all three men, by the way, I'd just like to mention this, had a fantastic sense of humour. So I, I don't feel I'm being disrespectful. <laughs> Oh, you mean physically painting it? Well, Vanessa, you worked there with him. You might uh, be Oh, yes. So, yeah. uh, oh, okay, yeah. I, um, <laughs> I did. I worked at Neniku Arts for um, a couple of years. So, from, like, And I worked um, closely with Harry. And, yes, he had an amazing sense of humour. He was just such an incredible person. Um, he also just loved having, you know, his uh, female uh, art centre managers doting <laughs> on him and bringing him cups of tea. Like, he was, you know, a very, you know, very sweet, lovely, lovely man. Um, he was, um, 
Look, he was in his 80s when he was painting. So he was, uh, you know, quite frail, but then he wasn't either. Like he was quite sort of a very strong, big man. Um, but when he was painting, it was um, it looked something like this. Yes, it would take him a, a while, but he just, it, there was a real joy. Like he almost like was smiling every time he painted. Um, so look, sometimes, you know, he could, you know, he, you know, he could paint quite quickly and other, and other times not, but it's, you know, on the one piece, yeah. So he would, you know, start and finish a piece like this, uh, look, over, over a series of sessions, you know, and it wouldn't be one, one, one day, but also, yeah, he, you know, he also did have the layers as well, but very different to, to Tiger and to, um, uh, uh, to Himinian Thierry as well, but, you know, he, he um, yeah, he would sit on his canvases, to his paintings, kind of go away, come back again. But he was always at the art centre. Like he really was like the figure of, of the art centre. So it was, yeah, it was a joy to work with him. Um, we might, if there's any pressing questions, but um, love for everyone to enjoy the rest of the show. Um, thank you so much for being here. Um, really, I'm, I'm so thrilled that you um, really wanted to be here today and to, to chat about um, these three men and um, thank you all again so much for your support. Oh, you have a pressing question. Um, yes. Pressing no, no. You mentioned the book earlier that you came last. Didn't catch what the. Oh, the one about the Nunkery? Yes. Yes. It's, it's Nunkery, Nunkery work, and it's by the NPY Women's Council. Women's I think I have it here. I'll show yes, it to it you. Yes, it might yep. be in the library. Oh, oh yes. So, it? yeah. That's right. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's a white book. It has hands on it, and actually, there's a beautiful. I think um, Tiki Minion Tiri is in the book, definitely. Yes, and oh no, and definitely. Def and hi, uh, uh, Harry is. I um, don't think Tiger is. He's in the he second is. edition. There He's are two the editions. Oh, there's two He's editions. the white okay. and then there's a, a brownie gold coloured, oh, okay. ochre coloured one that's the more recent one. Yeah. Yes, With I more, will show that to you. More Nunkaroos in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Pleasure. Um, can everyone? Uh, oh, also, yes. Thank you for to our team. I just want to say thanks so much for this year and for all the exhibitions. I mean, not thanks for me. Like we are thanking you all for being here, uh, and it's uh, been really lovely to have you. So thank you so much. Can everyone come join me? Thank you. Thank you.